What's up traders? I'm the Inner Circle Hotshot. I am not an educator. My educator is ICT. For free education, check out his YouTube channel, The Inner Circle Trader. With that being said, this channel and video is for entertainment and my own learning purposes only. This is not financial or trading advice. I am not a financial or trading advisor. Please trade at your own risk. Um, if you hear any background noise, I do apologize. Firstly, my dogs are in here playing around. Um, anyways, thank you to Yiha Chintaka on the recent comments on my recent video. Yiha did ask, um, <clears throat> can this checklist be applicable to lower time frame as an intraday trader? If not, can you kindly do one for lower time frame for dummies like me who scalped on the lower time frame like 30 15 and five minutes yeehaw you're not a dummy i let them know that price is fractal the same rules do apply um let them know that i'll get on this video so <clears throat> daily bias same rules will apply for the lower time frame we're just gonna apply everything here to the lower time frame and we're gonna go ahead and do that let's do it for you, DUSD. Let's go ahead and delete everything here. Okay, and then we're just gonna scrunch it up so we don't know what is going on. Let's go to like uh we'll do it on the one hour time frame. That's what we're on now. So daily bias practice on the one hour time frame. So we're applying those daily bias rules to the one hour and we can get like a one hour bias. So as we go back in time, we literally have no idea what is going on right now. Let's go ahead and grab that replay tool. Boom. We have no idea what price is going to do from this point. So right now, we'll go ahead to read bias first, identify the most previous run on liquidity. This is an obvious swing higher low. And from that point, recognize what phase daily price is in. Is it retracing, revert, not daily price, but one hour in this case. Is it retracing, reversing, expanding, which is spooling, ICT says. And this is actually the best phase to go in and hunt for what's going to be explained below. Or if none of these three, it's deemed consolidation until we can recognize a different phase. So our bias will be neutral. But this will allow us to know what kind of candles to anticipate next. So <clears throat> right here on the one hour, you can see that it ran out this liquidity previously. Boom. These are like relative equal lows. And you can see that price tapped it. Let's see, the low of this one came in at zero. 0 0.66508, the low of this one came in at 0 0.66503. So just a tad bit lower, this was ran. After that, <clears throat> the market structure shift point would be way up here. But as you can see, price actually came up, created this. This would now became, become a market structure shift point, okay? So we'll label that market structure shift. If you don't know why that's a market structure shift, go watch ICT's 2022 mentorship. You'll learn about market structure shifts in like episode six, somewhere around there. Anyways, uh, price takes it out. One, the candle that shifts structure, that candle, you have to wait for the following candle to open and close. Once it closes, then you go back through this leg and hunt for your fair value gaps. And you can see there was one right here. Let's go ahead and label that one out. My rules with fair value gaps is as long, I call it a one, two, three pattern. As long as price doesn't violate this one candles wick, the low here, and this will be vice versa, obviously. But as long as price doesn't violate this low, then this fair value gap is valid. If it gets violated, I'll just delete the fair value gap. I'll just consider it build, um, you know, rebalanced imbalance. Anyways, after it retraces, so right now market structure shift, it became a reversal, retraced back into this fair value gap, took out this liquidity here, boom. Now, after price runs out liquidity, it's likely to either reverse like it did here. It ran out liquidity 
and then it market structure shifted, this is reverse, or it's likely to retrace into a fair value gap or possible turtle soup liquidity, it could run out and then continue up, or it could consolidate. Um, as you can see here, created this fair value gap right here. And from here to here, you can see that the one candle of the fair value gap pattern, let me go ahead and delete this one, of the, the one candle of this fair value gap pattern, one, two, three, did not get breached as it came down and it continued up, okay? What did it continue up for? Liquidity, boom. It ran out liquidity. Now it came down and it actually reversed. Boom, it broke market structure. This was the market, it didn't break, it shifted market structure. This is a market structure shift point right here. So we will label this the market structure shift. Took it out. And right here, there's no fair value gaps or anything. So I couldn't base it off of anything. Um, so right here, it actually created a swing point. Hey, shh. I apologize. Created a swing point here, this high right here. We created this low right here. And you can see price obviously took out the high. Now this would right here also be a market structure shift point because um, it created the three candle swing right here. Whenever this candle closed, that created the market structure shift point, price ran it. So this next candle, there's no fair value gaps obviously because there's long wicks here, but now price is in an expansion phase. Just ran out this liquidity, of course. There's this fair value gap right here to the left. That price is, has failed. Now, if this one candle of the fair value gap gets violated, then it could continue up. But if it holds, if price doesn't run above that, then this is a valid fair value gap and we can potentially see price turning around for a reversal. And that's gonna be because of a higher time frame, of course, but we'll see what happens. Right now we're expecting retrace, there's a retracement. So here's your expansion, here's the retracement. Now it could be retracing into like an order block, things like that. I personally don't trade order blocks. Order blocks are the banks. They create order blocks. Fair value gaps is the algorithm. And I'd rather trade with the algorithm than with the banks. Because of course the algorithm is price. So that's just my take on it. It's totally opinion based. And you can totally do your own back testing and understand why I prefer fair value gaps over order blocks. It's just, I. Personally, I'm confused with order blocks as well. There's just so many. There's mitigation blocks, propulsion blocks, breaker blocks, order blocks, the list goes on. And they can either be a one candle or they can be two consecutive candles or they can be like three consecutive candles. It's just too much for me. Fair value gaps are way easier to spot. And I like simplicity. So I believe simplicity is key and that's why I just stick to fair value gaps. Um, but as you can see, it's in the retracement phase right now. And we could potentially see price take out this liquidity right here. Where is a market structure shift point? Way down here. So price would have to come way down here to create the market structure shift. Not anymore because it created this swing point right here. So this is now the market structure shift point. If price breaks here, this is a potential market structure shift to continue down. Um, now, this is just me reading price now. Now, I can go ahead and incorporate. I can go ahead and incorporate that currently price is bullish. And if price is bullish and the previous day was bullish, you want to skip Sunday's candle which in this case, we're not dealing with the daily, so we ain't got to worry about that. 
Then the next day that we trade, we expect the previous one hour's high to be taken out and the previous one hour candles low to be supported. In other words, there shouldn't be any movement below the previous one hour's low. Now, if price trades below the low, wait for that one hour's candle to close. If it closes back above the low with the long doji wick or something that doesn't show any significance of going down, then hold the same bullish bias to trade toward the swing liquidity from step two, which in this case would be here. This is the liquidity. And this is potential liquidity as a market structure shift. And you, shh, I apologize again. This dog is driving me nuts. Stop. Okay, to continue. We do expect, since it is bullish, that this one hour candles low will be supported. Price will not trade below it. And this one hour candles high will be breached. So price will open, Judah swing, manipulation, rally, and take out this high, this liquidity, and possibly mark structure shift to the upside. But we shall see. Okay, so price hasn't taken out this high. Price didn't take out this low. Now in this situation, I wrote down today, um, <clears throat> also very rarely do you see the previous one hour's high or low not traded through the current not traded through the current one hour while this current one hour candle is open in other words i don't want to confuse y'all um this is lower time frame consolidation and a retail squeeze pattern before a breakout decided breaks out will often become our bias to trade toward liquidity okay and liquidity in this case will be here or here, so it can break out either up or it can break out either down, okay? But we're holding that bullish bias, so we wanna see it break up. Let's see what happens. We want this candle to open, potentially come down a little bit, but we don't want it to, honestly, we wanna see this candle's low supported, okay? So maybe it can even like barely tap it. We don't wanna see it broken. Okay, so both of these got broken. So now, right here, um, now if price trades below the low, wait for that one hour's candle to close. If it closes back above the low with the long doji wick or something that doesn't show any significance of going down, then hold the same bullish bias to trade toward the swing liquidity. Now in this case, I do believe that this is a little bit of significance. I'm sure y'all would agree as well. So now bias for me has flipped. It has created, um, let's see, the high of this candle. Well, it has created a swing and it's respecting this fair value gap. So now bias could be flipping. We could be going bearish and we could see this market structure shift right here. Okay, price can market structure shift. So right now, price one hour next candle can open. Judah swing, manipulate up. Expand. Distribute down and take out this low right here for the market structure shift. We'll see what happens. Okay, so market structure shifted, huge displacement candle. The high did get violated right here. Let me just delete a lot of this because now it's getting messy. We got liquidity still up here. This was a market structure shift. Now, it did take out the high of this candle mm -hmm. and it cleared out any, uh, it cleared out both sides. That's what I have written here. 
Very rarely do you see the previous day's high and low, well, previous one hours in this case, high and low both traded through. If it does, it's usually in decisiveness or it's going to be a reversal soon. It's clearing the board on both sides of the marketplace. So when you see this, you want to prepare yourself for a potential reversal. So bias in this situation will be neutral. Our idea is invalidated. We will then redetermine the phase that price is in and where price is now headed. So the phase that price is in now, this is an expansion. It was a retracement. Since it shifted structure, it's in an expansion. Once it creates a three candle swing with the wicks, then we will anticipate a retracement, which will be a reversal and then continuation. Let's see what happens. Okay, so this just created the swing because this is the first, this is the second, and this is the third candle of that pattern. If you don't know why, go watch ICT's 2022 mentorship. You'll learn that. So this is the swing. This next candle, we will anticipate a bullish candle into this fair value gap right here. Okay, it should open. Respect the low of this candle. Take out the high of this candle and trade up into this fair value gap right here. Okay. Let's see what happens. Okay. So it actually took out the low of this candle, didn't take out the high, so we were wrong here. And it's okay, get over the concern <clears throat> about being right every time. Put aside the idea of perfection because you're not gonna have it perfect. You're not gonna get it perfectly, get out perfectly, not gonna have the perfect risk, the perfect asset, et cetera. You will always find reasons to be wrong Embrace per imperfection. Embrace the idea that you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be right. Being right is not equivalent to being profitable. That's important in the words of ICT right there. So in this case, we were wrong. Right now, it took out the low here. We could still potentially see a trade up. But right now, um, if we were bullish and it traded below, if price is bullish in the previous one hour was bullish. So in this case, we're bullish just because we're retracing. We want to see price retrace up into this. So that's bullish. That's a bullish move we want to see. Um, now, we trade. We expect the previous one hour's high to be taken out. In this case, it didn't. And the previous one hour's low to be supported. In, case, in this case, it wasn't. In other words, there shouldn't be any movement below the previous one hour's low. Now, if price trades below the low, you want to wait for that one hour's candle to close. If it does close back above the low with like a long doji wick or something that doesn't show any significance of going down, then you want to hold the same bullish bias to trade toward the swing liquidity. So in this case, I don't see any significance of it trading down like I mentioned in the checklist it closed with a long doji wick to the downside. So right now we're gonna hold the same bullish bias. We do wanna see the next one hour candle open, trade down, and then trade back up and then close. We wanna see it take out these highs here of these candles and we wanna see it get supported here. We wanna see this low supported and it'll potentially make another swing right here. Trade up into the fair value gap where we continue to see price down. Let's go ahead and erase all this mess and we'll go ahead and bring price out and see what happens. There we go. So price just retraced into this liquidity here. And now once price creates a three candle swing, with the three wicks, just like how we see here, three wicks. Once we see that happen right here, we create a high. The fourth candle, we can anticipate a bearish run, okay? Now, look at what price did. Instead of continuing down, 
price market structure shifted here again. So this fair value gap didn't hold, we will delete it. It is rebalanced price. Now, the next candle, remember after market structure shift, the candle that shifts it, we wanna wait for the next one to open, close, then go back through the leg and identify some fair value gaps. So if we delete all this, here's a fair value gap here. Here's a fair value gap here. And remember, ICT says to prioritize the first fair value gap if there is two or more, but always take into consideration that price can continue down here. So we could see price retrace because right now it's in a reversal phase. It could retrace because this is a swing that just got created right here. So this is now like a high. Takes it out. It's still in this expansion reversal kind of phase right now. So until price creates a swing, we can uh, be bullish. So we can anticipate that this candle is going to open, manipulate and do the swing down, create that wick, push through, take out the high here, and then close around here or something. Let's see what happens with this next candle. Or what the next candle can do is respect this high here, close below it, and then that'll create a swing. The following candle, we can anticipate a bearish one hour candle. Let's see what happens though. So that's just what happened here. Since this candle closed, created a three wick swing. That's a swing high. This next candle, we can anticipate price to open, due to swing down, manipulation, expansion, distribution, taking out the low this candle here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so instead it actually took out the high here. But remember our rules right here in this case, if price is bearish, we were bearish right here, we wanted to see price to come down. If price is bearish, and the previous one hour was bearish, then the next one hour that we trade, we expect the previous one hour's low to be taken out, the previous one hour's high to be supported. Um, so in this case, if price trades above the high, you wanna wait for that one hour's candle to close. If it closes back below the high with a long doji wick or something that doesn't show any significance of going up, then you wanna hold that same bearish bias to trade toward the liquidity. The liquidity in this case are the fair value gaps because remember in the last video, I did mention that fair value gaps are another form of liquidity because price likes to target liquidity and it tends to target fair value gaps as well. So, and since uh, there, there's money sitting in these areas. So right now you can see that it took out that high, but it closed with the long doji wick. So we wanna continue to hold that same bearish bias. So we wanna see this candle open, manipulate up, Judas swing, distribution, expansion down, ultimately taking out this low and this low, okay? And by doing that, it'll also create another swing. Let's see. So it created that swing, but it hasn't broken these lows here. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it took out this one, but again, closed with the long doji wick down. So right now we're holding that same bearish bias. And if you notice these candles are all kind of making higher lows. And in this situation right here, you can see that it's kind of making the squeeze pattern. It's creating higher lows, but it's continuing to sweep out sell stops to the upside. So any people who have their buy stops above here and here, they're getting taken in and then they're getting taken down. 
or people who are selling and have stop losses above here and above here, they're getting swept out. <clears throat> and they're building a retail belief that price is going to hold these lows, continue up, where it's likely that these lows are going to get taken out because the algorithm is creating a lot of liquidity before below these lows. So let's see. And there's another swing that just got created right here with these three candles. Another higher low is formed right here. Same bearish bias. That low was taken out on this candle. Well, not really. They were equal, but this high was held. So right now it's like in a lower time frame consolidation or like a retail squeeze pattern. And we want to see it break down. Look at this. So right now, price on this candle actually took out liquidity to both sides. So whenever it very rarely do you see the previous one hour's high and low both traded through. If it does, it's usually indecisiveness. So it's going to be a reversal soon. And it's just clearing the board on both sides of the marketplace. So when you see this, you want to prepare yourself for a potential reversal. So bias in this situation will be neutral. Our idea is invalidated. We will then redetermine the phase and where price is now headed. So right now we're neutral. We don't really know what's going on since it's taking out both sides. It's kind of, it's not showing its hand to both. We do know that price has fair value gaps to retrace it. So we could still expect some bearishness down, but with this sweeping both sides, it's neutral. Okay, let's just see what happens. So again, it swept out this high and this low right here. So we're still neutral in this case. Okay, so it closed within this high and this low. So right now it can be um, saying that lower time frames are potentially creating a squeeze pattern um, where price on the lower time frames is consolidating. We will see what happens. Boom. Okay, we broke out to the downside. Took out this wick. This high was supported right here. So right now we could potentially, our bearish bias is lining up with the fair value gaps. Price still has to target into these fair value gaps. So this one hour, this next one hour candle can open due to swing up, which will be the manipulation, distribute down to take out this low right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what the next one hour candle does again we want to see this high right here get supported we do not want to see this high get um taken out and we want to see this low get taken out though let's see okay so again we were wrong and that's okay. We need to get over the concern about being right every time. Put aside the idea of perfection because you're not going to have it perfect. Embrace imperfection. Embrace the idea that you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be right. Being right is not equivalent to being profitable. So just have to remind myself that. Have to remind you all that. Okay. In this case, we've seen this high get broken. But again, price closed below it. If you remember the rules. When price closes below it, leaves a long wick, we're going to consider this bias to continue to be bearish. We're going to hold the same bearish bias. So we do want to see, delete this one. We want to see this high of this candle respected. We want to see this low of this candle traded through and this low ultimately traded through targeting into this fair value gaps. So we want to see this next one hour candle open. Due to swing up, this is going to be a manipulation. Distribute down, ultimately taking out these lows here. Let's see what happens. Okay. So in this case, price again, took out here. Now, this could be a new rule for me. I don't know what to do in the situation where the high was taken out twice after we were holding the same bearish bias. In this case, I'd probably notate, and I'm going to notate this for myself here now. Go neutral. 
we could still see price return back down. But at this moment in time, price kind of did like a market structure shift right here. So we could be neutral here. Um, you know, we don't know what is going on at the moment. Let's just play a little bit of price. Right now, like ICT would say, if you're neutral, you have to demand more uh, more candles from price to get an understanding of what is going on. So right now, I don't know what's going on. We did just take out this liquidity that was built up along these highs here. So right now, this could be an expansion phase right after we did tap this fair buy. You got barely tapped into it. I wish I could go to the one minute to show y'all how to enter on there. But unfortunately, I feel like I went too far back. The one minute isn't supported at this point in time. Maybe future videos I can show that. Let me know down below in the comments if you would like to see that. But in this situation, price tapped this fair value gap, immediately took off from it, took out this liquidity. We are in an expansion phase, okay? So actually, we are not neutral. We're in an expansion phase where price can likely, one hour can likely open due to swing down, manipulation move, rally up, ultimately taking out the high here and supporting the low here. Let's just see what price does. So it closed within, again, this is like a lower time frame consolidation. We do still want to see this high get taken out. Potentially this low gets supported of this new candle. Let's see. Okay, so took out this low here. This could have been a lower time frame turtle suit because you can see that the high got taken out here. Boom. So this could have been like a buy. This low still got supported. This could have been a lower time frame buy. Took out these uh sell stops here. Boom. And ultimately it could head up to here. So now this next candle, we do want to see this low still being supported. We want to see this low be supported. This high get taken out. Ultimately, we want to see price open, manipulate down, expand up. Okay. Let's see what this next one hour candle does. Okay, this low of this green candle comes in at 0 0.67233. This one came in at, they were equal lows. So it supported it. They're equal lows. It created this high right here. So maybe we could see price. This next candle open, manipulate down, take out all these highs right here. Continue the expansion up. Beautiful. This is how you read price on the lower time frame. You can apply this checklist to any time frame. You can apply it to even the one minute if you want to go that crazy. But this checklist is pretty awesome. You could check out my last video as well and the video prior to that. It's pretty accurate, pretty spot on. Um, it does take a little bit of practice, but as long as you follow these rules and you understand what phase price is in, and what candles, what the candles are doing if they're closing within the previous candle or if they just wiped out both sides. You can actually understand a little bit more what price is doing. Now, let's just say that, for example, you know, price retraces into like a one hour fair value gap or something. You can go to the one minute. You can look for like a market structure shift move, same thing. And you could take a buy and get in a nice entry or you can enter like a sale, get in a nice entry, but that, that could be a future video. Let me know if you would like to see that. I do appreciate you for watching. If you have watched till the end, my dogs are getting crazy. I'm going to end it here. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next video.